uh, who's just produced not only a graphic novel but an accompanying soundtrack for it. Our special guest uh, joining us today on the phone, Graham Coxon. All right, mate? Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well. And uh, how are you? How's tricks? You're back in uh, you're back in Blighty because I think the last time we spoke to you, you were living in America. I was living in America until April 2020, um, which still sounds like a year in the future to me. Yeah. But yeah, I'm back in North London in my bedroom, which overlooks London, a realm which I hope to be ruling by <laughs> 2020. Comics. Oh, that was last year's plan. Yeah. Yeah, that was last year. Well, I mean, look at, look at, <laughs> look. At, I want to go back actually before we start looking yeah. forward to your future roles in our kingdom. Um, I've always been a fan of comics from an early age. Have you? Some. I think there's mm. so much that it's it's easy to be put off. But some, I tried pretty hard. You know, when I was a kid, you know, I had Beano, Beano, yeah, stuff like that. You yeah. know, I used to get an annual every year and things like that, and it sort of helped me read. A little bit, I suppose, and uh, I've got I've got into things. I've had Stray Bullets and Danger Girl, and and then when I was in Japan, I got interested in all the drawing that was in the in the sort of anime things, videos and stuff like that. So I've kind of been into the sort of gestural drawing and the, the idea that you can create worlds very quickly. And I suppose mm. that's why I relied on more of a graphic novel thing to to get the visuals out of the album. Do you remember when you were won over by the graphic novel? Are there important graphic novels? I mean, I grew up through the era of... And could we, not a dissimilar age, uh, through Action and 2000 AD and then the Marvel Universe. But really, I suppose there was that game-changing period at the end of the 80s, uh, which when you had... I mean, this would have been around the time that Blur were starting out, but th that was the era of people like Alan Moore who helped transform uh, the, uh, the comic world in some ways. I suppose they did. I mean, I, I, I just sort of had that. So a lot of them, Commando, those small. Remember Commando? <laughs> yeah, I, I was, I was kind of obsessed with war when I was a kid. I couldn't really help it. It was the seventies, you know, and I like war films and I like westerns, and they were all totally wrong, um, and dodgy. But I, I used to read a lot of them. I used to read old Eagles, and I remember yeah. when the Eagle comic tried to get back in the very early 70s or the uh, early uh, early 80s or late 70s you know i had i had a kind of a go at that um and well you're talking about that sort of time when i sort of met jamie and i got into deadline yes and and yeah. and those those kind of uh, tank girl wide world and and those those kind of comics made a bit more sense to me because the people you know it really is they were a bit about a, a little more normal especially wide world mm. Yeah, it's a bit more kitchen sink, you know. It wasn't quite so wild, and I've been in, I've been into the Silver Surfer and things like that. But I guess what I liked about them is that you could ingest them quite quickly. There's a, there's a few words, and then there's sort of some some drawing, and, and hopefully quite a lot of colour. Mm. And it's a bit like it's a bit like watching TV. It can sort of sink in, or you can take more time and have a you know really study the sort of how it's printed and the color and and, and so definitely those old-fashioned magazines had a beautiful sort of had that beautiful sort of half-tone coloration you know mm. that do newspapers you, used to have yeah do, do you do you think that i mean including some of the characters you mentioned do you think one of the things that you liked about uh part of this fictional world is is some of the lead characters and particularly i suppose uh from the 80s onwards had a real fallibility about them they start is you got the backstory which was almost very human in a way that some comic books hadn't been you know well i think a lot of heroes musicians and even comic book heroes they tend to be cartwheeling out of this sort of trauma and and they gain their powers through trauma you know um if you think about musicians john coltrane he got his superpowers because of trauma, mm. you know, and the Silver Surfer, you know, spends eons going through the galaxy, just thinking deeply. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose that's kind of kind of cool. I always thought the Silver Surfer doing the thinker pose as, as, as it goes would have looked good. Um, when did the you... The thinker by Rodan. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, I think that must be the Silver Surfer. Yeah, I think. Uh, when, when, did you, when did you think, well, actually, I'd quite like to create something like this myself because... And what was it that made you think, I think this would be a good outlet for some of the things I'd, I'd like to say and put down on paper as an artist and a writer? 
Well, I think that I've just been involved with stories. Um, how to get stories across visually. I've always been sort of descriptive. I've always loved words. I've written stories since I was a kid. It was one of the jobs on my list, one of three jobs on my list when I was about eight um, or four, one of four things or five. And uh, so it, 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 it's just a way of cheaply getting across a sort of a visual idea that I was trying to get at through through the songs. You know, I, I could have... Um, tried to scrape the money together and made a film but i i, I don't quite I, would have, I don't think i would have quite got over the vis the visual elements quite as well um and and also giving um expanding on on the story i had in my head that ran through superstate because the music did sort of come first mm. and then the story started to grow within it and, um and, and um, so so to try and get across how that that visual world was for me but also to have the opinions of several comic book or graphic um, artists to sort of um, see what they thought that this world looked like too. Mm. And so, before we get on to their interpretation, because I'm interested in wh where they took it and whether that surprised you, but did you, I suppose we should start with, uh, where did the concept grow as you were writing writing the songs? and uh, Or did you have a very firm idea, of almost a plot line and a landscape that you were going to work within when you started? Well, I didn't really. I had a series of sort of. They were almost a bit kitchen sink drama, but but some of them were kind of a little extreme. Yeah, more extreme than than EastEnders. You know, it's just kind of like whoa. You know, the, the, things are a bit extreme in EastEnders. But um, I, I wanted the sort of um, you know rather like a Netflix series. Like the first episode is kind of confusing, and but but it's sort of compelling, and you want to go on to the next episode. Mm. And then there's 12 more. And I like, I like the idea of, of several <clears throat> characters and their own situations and their, their, their own, their own lives and, and somewhat trivial lives, you know, um, or, or extra special things happening in their trivial life that is confusing and, and strange to them, um, which um, <clears throat> makes them explore what is happening to mm. them. And their lives sort of link up in some way, and then they fly to another planet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you should just just for people who don't know the uh, the record and the, the novel are out. But just if it and because it is quite an interesting, you should you should actually do the sort of concept of it. So we're living in a sort of we're living in the future on planet Earth, but a planet Earth is vaguely doomed, and there's very little chance of escape. And there's an exaggerated version of us and them. That's sort of it, is it? Yeah, it kind of is, really. I mean, I, it's it's simple, you know, good and bad, rich and poor. Um, I, I, I was drawing this sort of tower of golden crowns with this spaceship at the top, which ended up being the artwork on the front. And um, I was just wondering what that was about. And then this kind of sprawl, rather like sort of a lay of, of, of a sort of um, nondescript sort of, sort of nothingness where people were eking out their... They're living, they're living, and they're and, and trying to live their lives as, as best they could in, in this sort of oxygen-starved place, while people who lived in this sort of tower of crowns were, were were living it up, flying out into space for fun, and and living this fantastical life where obviously the rules for the poor people didn't really apply to them. So you know, it's kind of based around that, but but in a way. I, I realise there's kind of holes in that sort of a story, and it's a story we've we've heard a lot of before. Um, so really, I wanted there to be an over an overwhelming urge with with a lot of the characters in it, and there are a lot of a character, a lot of, of, of characters, and that's why there's many voices on on the, on, on the song to to sort of um, a feeling to to escape. It's a sort of a tyrannical, whether it's a, 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 a tyrannical force in their own lives or inside them or societally. Mm. It is Strive uh, for something better. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 that. It's, I mean, it's I mean, uh, uh, accompanying uh, obviously the music, uh, the the graphic novel itself, amongst the stories. Uh, that there is there's quite there's some quite dark moments, tender moments. It's quite fragile. <laughs> it's it's occasionally cornered, I think, and re resilient. I suppose in places some of yeah. some of the characters. Did you, as the writers were working on developing the the idea? Did were you amazed from what they could take out of what you'd given them? Yeah, well, we had several meetings um, where we would sort of 
last autumn where we would be um, zooming for like three hours every few days. Just I would I would write down and tell them what the stories were behind each episode, and we sort of had to to expand on some some i didn't really have much of an idea really it just seemed to be two people having a row you know and i don't want to wait for you there's a song called that and it just seemed to be two people having a row in the kitchen and um so we needed to take that somewhere so they were they were they were brilliant in just fleshing out a little bit of what what i thought that the songs were were about obviously there was somewhere was a, a lot more detailed like um <clears throat> only takes a stranger where i had this sort of an idea of a sort of celebrity red carpet duck shoot and um the fact that sort of i don't know that that, that certain certain people in in society may may be held up to uh, may be held at such scorn that they will be sort of hunted down for fun yeah. and and things like that and, and 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 sort of things that terrify me really and then the artists made it even more terrifying some some of it and rude as well oh. uh, some of it's quite yeah. Right. yeah. There is <laughs> but, um yeah. There is there is a great um for for all the serious sort of points it makes and occasionally it's a little su- surreal. It's I I found bits of it like reading uh there are chapters within uh the graphic novel of the Watchmen where you think I don't know where this is going or why this is here. Can we get back to the story please? And there are moments yeah. like that which are just, you know, diversions which take you into a place where you don't know quite what's going on. But the great thing about this and there is you know, there are points to say which where it's it's quite dark, but there's a real there's a real, I have to say there's a real Graham Coxon playfulness going on somewhere in this book and the record. Well, I hope so. I hope so. I like the idea of the the, the, the factions, you know, I, I, and I like the idea of them sort of looking cool, like the ball of light kids. I like the, the idea of there being in a gang. I like the idea of the astral light being a sort of a terrorist organisation or something like that or a secret police. And, and you know, I, I sort of um, rather like when the world is getting pretty rough groups of people start shouting and having the weirdest maddest ideas Mm. and um so so yeah i I like the idea of the feralness of the kids that are obviously undergoing some sort of treatment with 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 some sort of virtual or digital bromide to stop them copulating and 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 are supplied with um um, robot girlfriends and boyfriends and things like that and and that the society is fed and and um fed tv and food simultaneously through these insane sofas and um, <clears throat> so it's a bit like where we live what we live or how we'd like to live some of it is kind of how we'd like to live and and but but the thing is when you when technology um makes life really really convenient it also makes it an awful lot you know it balances up the stress too it seems to anyway talking of stress how long from start to finish to get this project finished and done and out well, I finished it two years ago, the album, and I started it. I, I wrote this song called We Remain on the day that David Bowie died. So that's when I started it. Is that four years ago? I'm not quite sure. Um, and then I sort of finished it with Blue May and Scott at Conk Studios um, a couple of years ago. And then I went to L.A. and then I thought about it and sat on it. And then I got back in sort of April, May 2020. And by the autumn, I really thought I should get this stuff together. So, you know, because I just didn't know, you know, I, I thought, you know, it's it's just going to be best to let people draw this thing. Yeah. And then if someone wants to make a movie of it, just, then they can. But it's just, all laid on. It's ready to go. Just <laughs> just saying, just in case there happens to be any movie agents <laughs> or movie production houses uh-huh. listening, just saying could be a movie yeah um, no, can i be in it please can, yeah <laughs> and i just i would like to audition and what's one last question and i suppose this is slightly so did you did you find um that some of the more sensitive moments of the songs yeah are almost you can almost push them into the um uh i guess into other other people's hands that they don't become about you because there's a lot of personal moments on 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 the record and is that easier if it if you're sort of disguised and they're being handled by characters in a comic book well that's sort of how i how i i've always been a little bit heart on sleeve with my stuff anyway but um i realized i can also be a little bit apologetic and not quite get to to 
to things that I, you know, can't access things as Graham Coxon. <clears throat> and that sort of started, I, I found a way that if I approach a song like Another Singer and forget about Graham Coxon for a bit, chuck him in the corner, um, like I did with End of the Effing World and things like that, 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 you know, if I have to be in a post-punk band and I'm called, you know, Jimmy Maniac or something, then I have to become that 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 guy, or, yeah. or I have to take take on a crooning kind of thing. And 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 I thought that melodies and lyrics and things like that came out of a different place from a place that wasn't so self conscious for me. Yeah. So so in, in a way, putting putting other people's and characters through this this sort of pain is you know and but it is an expression that the super stay and the tower of crowns or whatever that's in everybody's heads you know it, it's a sort of um about the the the, the, t the tyrants in their own lives and how they respond to them so i mean it's not just a kind of a, a story and 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 i think the ending to the, the whole story is 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 kind of poignant in that way so um Yes. Did that answer the question? It's, no. it, it does. And it's been lovely talking to you. I can't let you go without, because I know, obviously, fa fans all over the place are listening, thinking, right, he's finished this. What's he working on now? Have you got any plans now, or can you put your feet up for a bit? Well, I'm luckily involved in a number of sort of projects, really, which, which, which are all fun and surreal in their own way. So my life is... T um, um, pretty positive right now really you know it's, it's not perfect it's got its rubbish going on but you know um I'm, i've been i was working with duran duran there's the spaceship soul of uh jaded hearts and and a new project that i've been involved with it's, it's really i'm really excited about um that we may hear something of later in the year so oh, yeah. yeah there's a number yeah. of things that's research really it's great you are such a tease Graham coxon but we love you yeah. dearly <laughs> And it's been brilliant talking to you, and congratulations on this. I mean, it, obviously, it, it took a while, but it's, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, Super State, you. Uh, if, you, if you want to look at it, it's out now, the records. We'll play the track actually where it's set and sort of where it all starts. Uh, Super State and Yoga Town. Have yourself a great evening, Graham. Take care. Look after you yourselves. Too. Thanks, man. Steve. See you, man. You too. Bye.